Hello students, I hope you all are doing well. So let's start today's lesson, lesson number 4 of unit number 2. And today we are going to learn about random variables, probability mass function and probability density function. And I am very sure that after watching this video lesson, you would be able to understand how random variables and their probability functions arise in probability theory. Okay. So here uh, let's begin with the definition of random variable first and the definition says let s be the sample space corresponding to a random experiment then a random variable defines a function x from sample space s to set of real numbers r and that assigns a real number okay and this number determined by the outcome of an experiment I hope you are getting this definition but I will take an example so that you can understand this definition clearly okay for example say suppose we are conducting an experiment in which we are interested in uh, means um, in number of heads fine so say suppose we are tossing two coins together so what would be our sample space our sample space would be head 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 tail tail head and tail tail and suppose x is a function and this is going to be a random variable okay so x is a function whose values are basically real numbers okay and whose values are for each event is a number of head say suppose so for this event x would be equal to what x would be equal to 2 because here x for this event head head would be equal to 2. So this event is going to map at 2. This event and this event is going to map at 1 because these two events under this uh, you know uh, these two events under this uh, function which is a random variable head tail and you no know, tail head and head tail both are going to have this value number 1 and this for this event tt is going to be 0 okay so now you can see this x okay this is a function and which assigns the real numbers it is taking real numbers but these real numbers are determined by the outcome of an experiment and in this outcome we were interested in head so that is why we assign these numbers to this x okay so uh, if this x you know takes this type of discrete value 0 1 2 3 then this variable random variable is called discrete random variable but sometime in some cases this x okay for a particular event is basically is equivalent to the complete range for for example is equivalent to complete interval 0 to 1 okay in, in which we have so many numbers so if this type of values uh, this x is you know uh, taking then this variable this random variable is called continuous random variable okay so i hope now you have understood that random variable takes the values or real numbers okay corresponding to the each outcome and if this number is discrete then this is this random variable is called discrete random variable or if it is complete range or continuous range then this is called the continuous random variable okay now we will move further and we will learn about this discrete random variable and its probability function in more detail okay so here say suppose let x be the discrete random variable which takes values x1 x2 x3 and so on naturally it will take in this way only and let p p of x is equal to xi is equal to pi so this is going to be a you know uh, a function p of p at like we used to write f of x but this time we are writing p at x and what is x x is a random variable okay so p of x that means this function is equivalent to what it is it is giving us probabilities here pi's okay so then this collection of pi's basically the set of these pi's is called probability function okay and if 
it satisfy the following conditions what are these two number one all pi's all probabilities these values must be greater than equal to zero and number second the summation of these pi's should be equal to one okay so you can see under this function p we are going to have so many uh, you know uh, p1 p2 p3 corresponding to each x1 x2 x3 so if we are uh, you know putting them together in the form of a set so naturally you will get uh, this kind of collection x1 p1 x2 p2 okay so this is going to be a probability function this set this set is going to be a probability function okay and if we uh, write this collection of xi pi's in this form in the form of a table suppose so if we put the values of x which is a random variable discrete random variable we put the values like this x1 x2 x3 and so on and we put their probabilities corresponding probabilities in front of them then this kind of you know representation is called probability distribution or discrete probability distribution okay and uh, you must uh, you know, remember this thing that probability function for this discrete random variable is also known as probability mass function okay or point probability function why because we are getting points we are getting for each x1 x2 x3 we are getting pi's p1 p2 p3 so we are getting points okay so that is why this function is called point probability function as well okay so this is the whole theory and now i'm going to take an example so that you can understand what type of questions we can have in the examination okay so here in this example you can see from a lot of 12 items containing three defective items so you must understand suppose we have 12 items in this uh, particular collection and in this we have three defective and nine non-defective items okay and now they have just taken a sample of four items at random without replacement from it okay so they have just to somebody has chosen you know four items out of these 12 so now and they have defined this let a random variable x okay denotes the number of defective item so if random variable x is there okay so it is basically taking the value corresponding to the number of defective items in this sample okay so uh, according to uh, the definition what we have learned just uh, just learn this x can take basically three values three not three four values it may take zero value it may take one value it may take two value and three value why because maximum we have three defective items so out of four it may happen that we uh, we got all fresh items without any you know defective item so in that case x would have this uh, zero value okay and if out of these four suppose we get one defective item then x would be equal to one okay x would be equal to two and three if we get two defective item and three defective items respectively okay because x is taking these numbers okay according to this rule number of defective items okay now the question is find the probability distribution so that means now we have to find out their corresponding probabilities okay so we have to find out all probabilities p of x equals to x size we have to find all these and this is called a probability function this complete representation is called what probability distribution we have learned this thing only so if you will uh, solve this problem so you will get probability for x equals to 0 is equal to 14 by 55 okay how because uh, see uh, if it comes in exam uh, examination you have to write in the proper way so for x equals to 0 basically p of x uh, we, we have to use this formula because out of 9 we are getting 4 fresh pieces because 9 were non-defective items 
okay so this would be uh, in our uh, numerator and in denominator we, uh, we are having total 12 items and in total out of 12 we are getting 4 so this will give uh, us 14 by 55 okay for x equals to 1 that means we are getting 3 non defective item and 1 defective item so out of 12 we are getting 4 so denominator will be the same but out of 9 we are getting 3 and and for and we will multi, uh, write the multiply sign here and 3c1 okay out of these three defective item we are getting one so if you will solve this you will get this number okay so corresponding to each number which uh, you know which is equal to the random variable okay which that means you can say if the random variable takes a uh, value 0 1 2 3 then you have to find out corresponding probabilities and if you will put all these probabilities in the form of a table this is the, called the probability distribution okay and uh, i hope now you have understood that how we use these random variables and probability functions okay so now i will take another example here for more clarity see in an experiment consists of three independent tosses okay of a fair coin so let x uh, be the random variable whose values for any outcome is the number of heads obtained okay so find the probability function of x and construct a probability table and the probability chart and distribution of x everything okay so again you you need to do the same thing uh, basically uh, first of all uh, you have to uh, you have to find out means uh, what values this x can take okay so this uh, if um, in the three uh, um, three trial in a to in a if we are tossing a coin so maximum we can get three times head okay so or minimum we can uh, have no head so definitely this x will uh, take the value 0 1 head 2 head or 3 heads okay so and probability function of fx you can directly uh, you know calculate uh, by taking uh, you know a sample space okay i hope you will be able to get because this uh, this thing i think i can expect that you will be able to find out probabilities of getting no head getting one head two head and three head when we are tossing a coin thrice okay so likewise this would be our distribution and if you will plot the chart okay you can see you are getting the points so that is why it is called the probability uh, you know point probability function as well okay because it gives us points only and this is the probability chart for this random variable x okay so i hope now this you have this much has been cleared now uh, see next we are uh, going to learn about probability function of a continuous random variable as i told you that continuous random variable a random variable x uh, which basically is a continuous random variable and it takes all possible values in a given interval okay so for example age height so suppose uh, we are interested in age age 12 years to 13 years okay so we are you know getting uh, we are selecting all the members those are 12 and uh, 12 years one day 12 years two days like hours so we are getting the complete range here so x is taking the complete range here okay so this kind of uh, variable when it takes the value then we say that is the continuous random variable okay and corresponding probability we will get and definitely this time we will not get a single point this will get a function fine so here the probability density function in that case you can understand in this way let's consider a small interval as uh, as this in this figure okay we have considered let's say this is x and uh, x minus dx by d dx by 2 and d plus dx by 2 so that means the length of this complete interval is dx okay so we have selected this small interval okay about this point x now let fx be a continuous function say suppose this is a continuous function fx okay so fx dx represent probability basically and what is it is it is giving me the complete area here okay so uh, what uh, you know falls uh, here under this uh, you know curve and bounded by this x-axis and under this interval 
So here this probability function where this x lies between this range to this range is equivalent to fx dx okay and this fx is going uh, is is called basically probability function okay or probability density function sometime okay so if you remember in the discrete uh, you know discrete random variable probability function is called probability mass function but when we talk about the re uh, continuous random variable then this function fx basically which is equivalent to the probability which gives the probabilities okay is called basically probability density function pdf remember this thing okay now i will take an example that what kind of questions you know uh, can be asked in examination so here but before that yeah few uh, important points you need to remember you need to memorize for this continuous random variable and pdf probability density function so here first thing is this pdf probability density function fx satisfies the following two condition number one again that all these fx must be greater than or equal to zero for all x belongs to this interval second is throughout this interval if you will integrate okay you will get the sum is equal to 1 because we know that in discrete we use summation sign and in continuous range we uh, use this integration sign so the uh, means properties are both are the same conditions what we what we you know uh, learn in the probability mass function so these are the almost same now the second is second point is that this thing see we have just understood that probability from a lower bound to upper bound would be calculated by using this f of x because it gives the area so area we can find out fx probability density function this is pdf and if we will integrate under this range from a to b we will get its probability we will get a value okay so now see here if we put x equals to 0 only that means we are from a to a only so definitely this integration will give us 0 okay so here this implies that if we put this thing x lies between a less than equals to x less than equals to b it would be equivalent to probability of a less than x less than equals to b this would be equivalent to this thing okay and this would be equivalent to this thing so that means it doesn't matter whether we include uh, these endpoints or not okay because probability of this and probability of this both are same okay so in 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 a question if uh, any of these things you know asked uh, can be asked in the question then you will use simply this formula from means you will just use these limits and you will integrate the probability function okay so uh, this point i think has been clear now third point is we cannot represent continuous random variable by a table okay because there there we were just getting the points but here we are getting the complete range or complete you know continuous function so we cannot put the value all the values in the table okay so these are the three main points you need to remember now let's have uh, an example see first of all in this example this is a third example of this uh, you know a lesson so a continuous random variable x has the pdf probability density function as follows okay see fx is defined in different range differently okay from 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 and uh, elsewhere okay from uh, from uh, means from uh, above this thing 4 now the question is compute probability of x greater than equals to 3 so that means we are interested in this okay so here you can see in the solution if we are we are uh, you're interested in uh, probability x greater than equal to 3 so this would be equal to what from 3 to 4 and above so from 3 to i can write from 3 to infinity okay but here we have to break the intervals because from 3 to 4 we have function in this way 1 by 4 4 minus x and from 4 and above we are having this function 0 
so if you will integrate from 3 to 4 and you will use this function you will get your answer it's very simple this is a second question probability of modulus of x less than 1.5 it means probability of minus 1.5 less than x less than equals to 1.5 that means we are talking about this okay so here firstly we have to uh, you know understand this this function is defined from 0 to 1 so we cannot uh, take this thing so that means it is we can consider it is 0 over there okay so here see probability of x which is you know greater than uh, less than uh, minus 1.5 plus less than this thing okay so uh, okay it must be greater than basically here and now we will consider that from minus 1.5 to 0 it would be 0 from 0 to 1 we will choose uh, you know this function from 1 to 1.5 this will lie in this range so we will use this function and you can see here we have not used the last limit okay so uh, under these limits you can integrate and you can get your answer for this uh, two i think from one to three you will have to use only these two intervals and then you will integrate and you will get your answer so here we were just interest uh, interested in uh, probabilities okay so i hope uh, these two three points have been uh, clear to you and you have understood these three points random variable discrete continuous and their probability functions okay so in this lesson we have learned uh, this much only and probability mass function is basically corresponding to discrete random variable and probability density function is corresponding to continuous random variable okay so for any query please uh, feel free to contact me and uh, uh, i will give you a few uh, you know questions as well for your practice so please keep studying okay thank you so much